today is Friday, October 2nd. Back on this day in history, in 1789, George Washington sends the United States Bill of Rights to the states for ratification. The first comic strip in a newspaper appears for the first time in 1895. In 1919, President Woodrow Wilson suffers a stroke and is left partially paralyzed. Charlie Brown appeared for the first time in a comic strip in 1950. The Twilight Zone from creator Rod Sterling premieres in 1959. All this happened on this day in history, October 2nd. Tomorrow, the girls and boys cross country team will compete out at Hoddle Park in the TEC meeting. The girls will, run, will start racing at 11 a.m. Good luck to our Indians runner at TEC. Last night, the Lady Indians traveled to Centerville and lost, lost in four sets. The Lady Indians are now 4-13 and, and will play next at home against South Adams. Also last night, the boys' tennis team traveled to Portland for the second round of the sectionals. The boys fell 1-4 to four with the lone winner, Junior Braden Hallgate. Next week will be a busy week for sports at Union City. Not only is it homecoming week, the girls' volleyball team will be in action twice on Tuesday and Thursday at home. And the Powerpuff game will take place Wednesday night. The homecoming parade will be at 4 p.m. on Friday. And Friday night, the boys welcome in the Centerville Bulldogs to homecoming TEC matchup. Good luck to the athletes that are competing next week. And speaking of Powerpuff, if you still plan on participating, you need to pick up the rule sheet and release form in the high school office. Forms are due back and signed by next Tuesday, October 6th in order to play or coach. The Powder Puff game will take place on Wednesday, October 7th. The Student Council will be holding a rubber ducky derby on Sunday, October 11th at Harder Park in Union City. It is a fundraiser for the Student Council. You can rent a rubber ducky for $2 each or you can rent three duckies for $5. Your duck will race down the creek, and the duck that crosses the finish line first wins the lucky owner half of the cash from the ducky renters. The more ducks that are rented from the student council, the more money that there is to win. This event is sure to quack everyone up. Renters of ducks need not to be present to win. The winner will be notified by phone or in person. See any student council member if you have any questions or to rent your ducky. Good afternoon, Northside, Union City Junior Senior High School, whoever's watching out there. Got another Freaky Friday coming your way. Mr. Lynch here with the sixth grade. Hope you guys' week is going really well and uh, wish you for a great weekend as well. Well, we have a demonstration today that's all about density, how tightly packed molecules are of two particular substances. In this container here, I have poured about six to eight cups of fresh water. And this container, the same amount, except we added quite a bit of salt to it to make it a, a, a super saturated solution. Fancy word for a lot of salt and some water. We're wanting to compare the density of fresh water and the density of salt water and a real easy way to do it. You've done things like this before as a kid, I'm sure, where you test something and see if it would float, put a piece of wood in water and see it float on the water. Well, if the wood floated, it would tell you the water's more dense than the wood, and the wood is less dense and actually floats. We're doing the same thing, so I'm going to use an egg. I'm going to take an egg and set it in the fresh water and predict what you think this egg is going to do, sink or float. They set it in there. Well, it sank to the bottom. That would tell us the egg is most dense and the fresh water isn't quite so dense. So we'll get the egg out of there. Let's go over to the salt water here, and let's see if it does the exact same thing. You think it'll sink or float? Well, what do you know? The salt water makes the egg float. So just from that part of the demonstration alone, you should be able to compare the two and say, fresh water it sank, salt water it floated, so it must be that salt water is actually more dense than fresh water. Is that what you were thinking? Well, here comes the fun part. What I like to do then is take the waters and combine them. We're going to put some salt water down into the container, fill it up about halfway. And then 
We're going to use <clears throat> a little bit of a tool because I don't want to just pour the water in and slosh it all together. I'm going to pour the fresh water in. If the fresh water is more dense than salt water, which we already proved it wasn't, it would actually flip it upside down and sink to the bottom. And if the fresh water is less dense than salt water, is what we just actually proved, we, we would think the fresh water would stay on top of the water. Well, there's a real easy way to figure this out. I'm going to put the fresh water into the container and then do one more little experiment. So we'll fill this up with some fresh water, maybe up close to the top. Then I'm going to drop the egg into the fresh water and the salt water into this container. And I want you to predict and see if you think you know what's going to happen to that egg. Here we go. Watch the egg. Boom. Isn't that crazy? The egg, which was more dense than the fresh water, it did sink right down through the fresh water. And the egg, which was less dense than the salt water, stops and literally floats on the salt water. So you can easily see <clears throat> by this demonstration, fresh water, less dense than salt water, and an egg is somewhere in the middle. And an egg is more dense than fresh water and is less dense than salt water. So we actually got the egg to float right in the middle. Now you know a little bit more about density of the two materials, fresh water and salt water. Hope you guys have a great day.